So this week I've been working on a ton of projects and photo editing and uploading new videos to my landscape photography school. And I've just been getting after it all week. And then I got up this morning and I was thinking, man, I got to publish a YouTube video today because I have a promise to myself that when I'm home during the winter months and I'm not on hiking trips, I'll put out a YouTube video every week if I'm here. And usually I get this done the previous Sunday, so I don't have to think about it all week. I can just knock it out and then get the future week's work done and then publish my YouTube video on Thursday. But I didn't get it done this week. So I woke up today and I was sitting in bed having a coffee. And I was thinking, man, I should just skip today. Just skip it. Who cares? And then the voice in the back of my head said, oh, you're just going to skip it? You're that lazy? You can't make a 10 or 15 minute YouTube video? And... I find that a lot of times there's always this nagging voice in the back of my head and I know I should be going one way. My gut instinct says, Dave, you have to go this way. This is what you promised yourself. And then this other voice in the back of my head says, nah, just skip it this one time. And then that one time will turn into two times and it'll turn into four times and then it'll turn into a week or a month or a year. And then when this happens, you just start getting depressed. You feel like you can't do anything right. And it just starts to build up in the back of your head. And I think a lot of people are having this happen where they're number one, not having exciting things to work on. So they might be working a job that they don't like, or they might be going somewhere every day and saying to themselves, I really don't like this, but there's no other way for me. I know there are these other people that can go out and do things they love and make money from it and grind and get it done. But that's just not for me. I wasn't built that way. And I used to think this way. I guess 12 years ago, when I worked a full-time engineering job, I was an aerospace engineer at Boeing, I would look on the internet, and this was like the early days when there was Flickr and all these other photo sharing things before social media. Social media was just starting to come out. And I would look at these people and I would say, well, they have this special thing that they can do, but I'll never be able to do that. And then my engineering mind said, well, let's look at the actual first principles of this. What are the chances that there's all these people on the internet that are working on things that they want to do and they don't have that background thing that keeps them from doing it? Are they smarter than me? Probably not. I mean, some of them might be, some of them might not be. Are they having better luck line up in their world than me? Well, some of them might be, some of them might not be, but you're never going to have luck unless you actually show up and try to do the thing every day. So I said to myself, there's only one way to find out if you can actually pull this off for yourself. And that's to get up and pick projects every day that you wanna work on, even if you don't feel like you have the motivation that they do, or the time that they do, or the right skills that they do. They do. You gotta pick these projects every day, and you gotta follow your gut instinct of what you think is the best thing to work on, and what drives you the most, and you just have to get after it. And one thing I learned during this over the past 12 years is that almost every day when I wake up and I think I have to do something, and I know I need to do that in my life and it's something I'm excited about and I wanna see this long-term progression towards this final goal. When I'm waking up to do this work every day, I never feel like it. And especially the first few minutes when I think about it, let's say you're sitting down to edit photos or you're sitting down to work on a blog post or make a video or whatever. I'm never into it the first few minutes. So what I do is I set a 90 minute timer and then I have two blocks during the day. And the first block, I always knock out the thing that is making me the most anxious for that day. So I'll just sit there for a second. I'll say, what's the thing you're most scared of or the most anxious of? Well, I'll just decide what I have to do, the simplest possible steps. I'll pick 90 minutes and I'll just start getting after it. So this removes the thinking from my mind of I don't want to do that thing. And then the second block, I'll just pick the next thing that makes me anxious or scared. And I'll just do that. And then when you start to watch these days build up one on top of the next on top of the next, what you realize is, is it's very likely that anybody that's a prolific creator, anybody that's creating things that they want to do and not sacrificing their life just to make money and say, well, this is the safe route. This is what everybody else is doing. I should just do it. People that are actually going after stuff that they want to do on a consistent basis, they don't want to do it half the time. They don't want to do it 90% of the time, but they know the result is going to feel good. And they know once they get in the flow of doing it, it's going to feel good. So I think the big trick is, is that you have to realize that nobody that is successful and nobody that is working on things that they actually care about, it's always going to be anxiety ridden. You're always going to be scared of doing it. You're not going to want to do it. And if you just show up and do it anyway, this is how you get the results over a long period of time. So back to my YouTube thing for the video today, I was thinking, well, if you don't do the video, 
What are the big downsides? Your brain starts telling you all these lies, right? And I do YouTube videos because I just enjoy it. I don't do it for the money. It doesn't make that much money. I like to put out content. I like to challenge myself to be able to create content. And I also like to grow a group of other like-minded individuals that want to learn. And I like to teach people stuff. So YouTube's not a part of my business model or my business plan at all. Most of my income comes from my online photography school where I teach people photography. And then it comes from taking people out on photo workshops and adventures and stuff. If you guys are interested in either of those, I have links down below this video you can check out. But I don't need to do YouTube, but it's challenging to me and I love to teach people. So when I look at this stuff, I this part of my brain just starts to say, well, you can just skip this week. You don't really need to do it. But as soon as you do that and you break this link of goals you have in your mind, if you have one goal and you say, I'll just wait till the next week or I'll wait till the next month or the next year, as soon as you break that link where you stop that habit and stop doing it, all these other links in my life will break down. So if I don't do the YouTube video, I'll also make the same excuse of you don't need to go out and run 10 miles today or you don't need to lift weights today or you don't need to go out on a backpacking trip this month. And I have all these goals in my mind. Like I have things I want to do every day because I know in the long term, the repetition of these small things makes me a better person. But if you break the chain for one of those things, all the rest of them start to fall apart as well. And then your life just goes off the rails. You become anxious. This is at least how I feel. I get anxious. I get depressed. I don't trust myself. And I just feel like a piece of crap. And all these small little things add up. The same goes with eating healthy and working out. If I just eat garbage one day, well, then the next day I'll be like, I ate garbage yesterday. I can just do it today. It's not a big deal. Over the long term, it won't make a big difference. But all these little mental tricks that you tell yourself, they will just lead up into a whole philosophy of life where you're not doing all these little things. So 40 or 50 years go by and you look back at your life and you're like, oh, I just missed out on everything I wanted to do because I had these negative feelings every day and I listened to them. So I know that this is coming at me. I'm watching my mind. I'm watching how my mind operates. And I watch the things that my mind will try to tell me that'll keep me from getting where I want to go. And one of those pops up, I'll instantly just get to that 90 minute block of work. And I'm say to myself, I'm not listening to it. Start on the 90 minute block of work. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just crank it out. So I came out here and I was like, well, what do I want to talk about? I just set up my camera and I said, well, let's just talk about what happened today and let's just get it out and see what happens and see where it goes. And then from there, you can feel yourself as you get into this 90 minute block of work, or whatever you want to choose. After the first 10 or 15 minutes, that anxiety starts to reduce and then it starts to go down. And then you just get in the flow of work and you realize it's way easier just to get the work done than to sit around and be anxious about it. So I think a lot of people are out there in anxious and waiting mode and they're always telling themselves in their mind, I'll just start tomorrow or I'll just start next year. And then this slowly starts to build up and it becomes you. You become the person that's always just thinking about this thing I want to do. I get tons of emails from people, which is great. I like, get, I like hearing from people, but people always ask me, Dave, how do I become a pro photographer? Dave, how do I go out on backpacking trips? How do I do any of these things? And my answer to you is I'm not a genius. I just look at things I want to do and I block them down into the smallest steps. And then out of all the things that I want to do, Whenever I wake up in the morning, I pick the thing that's making me the most anxious or the most scared because that's the thing that's probably going to be the most challenging, but generally the most challenging ends up being the most rewarding as well. So I'm not making like a five-year business plan or even a month-long business plan. I just have all these big projects that I want to work on. I have goals in my life and I just simplify. I just have them on a long list. Take a piece of paper, write all your life projects and then look at the things you want to do and say which one is making me the most anxious or the most scared. And then from that one, just write the next step that you have to do. Finish that step and then determine the next step you have to do. You don't need this big, long corporate agenda where you have to plan all this stuff out. I think a lot of people get brainwashed in school and brainwashed in all parts of life into thinking that there's these other people out there that have these special skills that they don't have. But in reality, it's all about just getting up and getting after it and working and picking the things that scare you. And what you're going to realize over time is when you pick these things that scare you and you just knock them out. I'm doing it right now, right? I'm knocking this YouTube video out. And I guarantee after I'm done with this video and I edit it and publish it, I'll feel way better. I could have spent the same hour and a half today just sitting around thinking, trying to justify why I don't have to do this video today. It's just a waste of time. And then those times over your life add up and then you just get 
uncomfortable with your actual self. You don't trust yourself. You don't respect yourself. And then other people around you won't respect you either because you're going to say you're going to do stuff and then you just don't do it. And it becomes depressing and it just sucks. I hate to see it happen to people because I think the decision process is so simple and people make it so hard. And it's not like I'm above this. Every day when I wake up, I don't want to do stuff. I'll just think, nah, not today. You can just push it off. You're doing okay. You got enough money. You have free time. Just today is the day you can just take a break. Well, I think breaks are good, but determine your breaks during the week. So another thing I do that really helps out is just have a list of the stuff you want to do that week. Write a few things down on a piece of paper that you want to do that week. And at first, you're going to write a list that's way too long for what you can get done that week. So I just pick two or three huge things that I want to do that week. Put the most important thing up top. And then once I get all those things done, I'll take a break for a day or two. I'll just spend time outside. I'll go on a hiking trip, whatever else. But I won't let myself do it until I get through that list. And if you just force yourself into that, you have this break at the end. And the break doesn't have to just be laying around in bed or whatever. It can just be doing something different. So I have my photography projects I want to work on. And then I just have life projects. They could be chores, stuff I have to do around the house. I'll do that for my break because I know I can just give my mind a little break. And I can just think about and process the next big photography projects I want to work on. And over time, if you just get into this habit of just keeping things simple, write it down on a piece of paper and tell other people you're going to do it and then hold yourself accountable. And you'll be amazed at how much value you start to attribute in your mind to yourself and you start to trust yourself. And then when you have these days where you're tired and you don't feel like doing stuff, you just say to yourself, well, I'm not the kind of guy that does that. I'm not going to just stop. I made plans with myself. I'm going to hold true to those plans and I'm going to execute on those plans. And over the long term, I think people, including myself, think they can get way more done than they can in a short amount of time, but they underestimate the amount of stuff that they can get done in 10 years. So if I look back six years, seven years ago, when I quit my aerospace engineering job to do photography full time, I never guessed that in seven years I would be able to get to where I am today. And of course, I've had tons of failures along the way getting where I am today. But I think that constant, let's just get up. I'm going to hold myself accountable. I'm going to pick the things that I'm scared to work and I'm just going to get after it. That adding up year after year after year, you get this exponential curve, right? At first, it's going slow because you don't know what you're doing. You don't trust yourself. But as all these little chunks of work build up and you grow trust in yourself and people start to trust you and you do what you say you're going to do, this starts to get exponential. And then the results from the input start to get huge in the end. And then the big mental trick is once you start to get the good results, well, then you start to tell yourself, well, I'm getting pretty good results. I can just back off for a while. I can take a break. I don't need to work as hard as I used to. And I had this happen to me during COVID. My business was going well. Everything was going well. I was financially stable and everything looked great to me in life. And I said, well, COVID's going on. I'll just take a little break. I don't need to work as hard. And about two weeks into that, I was just getting up with no driver in my life. There was no motivation. I was just saying, I'm just resting, right? And I started to get depressed. I didn't work out as much. I ate worse food. I wasn't mentally as tuned in to what I needed to do. I didn't feel alive. And this kind of thing can just start to double on itself and double on itself and dig you into a deep hole and you can feel like you'll never get out of it. So if you're feeling depressed about your photography, if you're feeling down, pick things that really scare you and things that you think you can't do but are realistic and you know you actually could do them if you put in the work. And then refuse to back down when you have those mornings where you're like, oh, I don't want to do it today. Just get after it. It's so simple. And whenever I'm looking at my life and looking at the best and the worst times, the worst times is when I'm not going after things that I don't think I can do. Meaning like when I'm not picking things that are really high above my current skill level, I just feel like I'm coasting. And you would think these would be good feeling times because everybody thinks to themselves, well, when I'm retired one day or when I have enough money one day or when I finally have the right photography skills one day or the right gear, then I'll be happy. And when you get to that place, you realize that you're not happy because you never learn to constantly trust yourself and it constantly expand on the work. And I think the happiness or the contentment in life, at least for me, comes from constantly picking challenges and then just grinding. Because when you're not grinding, your brain starts to think of all these other things 
of ways to make your life better and you start to get greedy for relaxation. And relaxation can be good if you're actually tired, but make sure your relaxation is a reward for going after things that are extremely, extremely out of your wheelhouse, meaning things that you didn't think you could do, but you do it anyway. And that challenge of the grind and just getting after it will give you a better high. At least it gives it for me. You get on this high and you're like day after day after day, you're just cranking out the work and you're just seeing these ideas in your mind come to life in reality. You get on this track and you just start going exponential and you feel great. And then my biggest problem is I'll do that and then I get such a rush from creating and knocking out all these goals in my mind that I'll get burnt out and I'll get so tired and I don't realize it because I have this adrenaline rush of creating and then I'll just hit a wall. And usually at that point, I know I just have to go on a hiking trip or do something where I'm completely disconnected from everything and I can kind of process what I just went through. Because when you get in the adrenaline rush and the high of creating, at least this is how it goes for me, a lot of times you're not able to see outside of that area. So you can't you can't look in on your life and determine if you're making the right decisions. So it's good to have those breaks where you're just doing something completely different. And this is where endurance comes in for me. I like to run a lot. I run 40 to 50 miles a week and a high elevation up in the mountains and I just push myself. I also do cold plunges. I have a chest freezer back here behind the camera and it's just filled with ice water at 33 degrees. I get in that every day and doing these little things that will just snap you mentally out of your brain and into reality, they help me so much because I can process work. But also these big breaks of time when you can go out backpacking or spend time away from the internet or social media or other people's ideas, they're just absolutely essential because then you can look back in on your decisions. So the balance between just crushing out your goals and then taking breaks to kind of refine the decisions in your goals and kind of make new pathways or directions you want to go is absolutely essential. So don't feel like you have to constantly do something every day that's moving you towards your goal. Sometimes my breaks are just looking at the next steps that I have to make. But I think a lot of people get stuck in the world of always thinking and planning about the next great steps they have to make. And they've never got good at executing and getting up and doing the work every day, even though they don't want to. So you can make all the plans you want, but if you don't execute, you're not going to trust yourself to carry out those plans. So don't make this long planned agenda like a big corporation might make. You're a creator. That's your upside. Corporations move slow and many of them go bankrupt over time because they have too many people just moving around ideas and not actually executing on those ideas. So get used to executing, even if it's executing in the wrong direction, at least you get this data point. You could say, well, that was the wrong way to go. Now I can move a different way and do it quickly. And I would rather move quick and get a lot of feedback from which paths worked and didn't work than just make all these plans and never do it. Because number one, you're going to get this great rush of creating. The high of creating is way better than drugs and alcohol. It's way better than anything you can get. The same with the high from endurance running long distances, say 50 miles out in the mountains, your brain's going to tell you you can't do it, but you can just override that and do it anyway. And it gives you this trust and this self-worth that you can use and leverage out in everything else you do. And you just start growing on that exponential. And over time, for me, seven years of just being a full-time photographer, you look back at your old work and you say, that was such garbage. But you also can't believe that you got to the new place you're at. And if you just keep doing this in seven years from now, the gap from that seven years from now, back to here, well, I'm on the exponential now. So it'll be even way, way bigger. And you'll just never believe how much you get done just by that daily activity of just saying, I'm not listening to my brain. This is what I decided to do. I'm keeping my word to myself. I'm just going to get after it. That's the number one skill set you can use for photography. Don't think that other people have this skill that you don't have. They just execute while you plan. Don't be a planner. Make small, simple plans. Dedicate everything in your life to things you actually want to see happen. If you're going to work every day and it's not part of something you actually enjoy, you're not building stuff that you actually want to see exist, and then you have all these excuses of why you have to go to that job, well, you only get to live once. Life's super short. You'll be surprised at how fast 10 years go by. And if you do that, one day you're going to be old. This is one of my biggest fears when I was working a 9 to 5 I didn't like. I'm not knocking 9 to 5s. You can have a great 9 to 5 if you really like it. But as soon as you don't like it and you're not looking for the next move of how you can help people out or optimize your life, well, you're succumbing to the fear. You're succumbing to the I can't do it. You're succumbing to yourself saying, well, other people will be able to do this, but it's not for me. I can't take this risk. 
as you do this over your lifetime, you're always going to sell yourself short if you're just backing down to that fear. All it requires is one step into that fear and then the next step into that fear and the next step into that fear. And these steps aren't very big. They're not hard to do. Just go into it. Just go at it and say, I'm not listening to the fear. I don't care. I would rather live a life where I'm challenged all the time going at the fear than live a life where I'm sitting back and saying, nah, this thing's not for me. Other people are built to do it, but not me. So hopefully that helps you guys out. I'm in a battle every single day with myself. I'm always looking at my photos and saying they're not great. And it makes me not want to edit photos. I'm looking at my videos and my talks and saying they're not great. It makes me not want to do them. But if you do them anyway, that's the only way you get to a better place and you start to build that momentum. And that momentum escalates and gets exponential and you'll just be able to see it and you'll feel it in your life and people can feel it from you and they'll want to be a part of it. And it's just one of the best things you can do for your life. So pick those small steps, pick the things that scare you and just start getting after it. Create 90 minutes of something today and I can guarantee you it'll make you feel good.